Hello everyone, this is Stephanie. Welcome to another video. So today we're going to work on the Standing Stones necklace. And this necklace is using some of the beads from my most recent collaboration with Eureka Crystal Beads on the Stonehenge Ancient Ruins collection. So this was so much fun to make and uses so many different techniques. Uh, we've got two bezels going on. We've got interesting connections. We've got a, you know, a, a a clasp using a rivoli. So lots of different techniques here. So even if you don't have the collection, which I will link down below, or you can, even, you know, I'll link um, the page where they have all the beads separately as well, if you just want to get the beads for the necklace. But even if you don't have the beads, you should stay and watch anyway, because this is like a master class. There are so many different techniques. I go through each technique. So it'll be really helpful um, if you're, you know, if you really want to learn all these different techniques like crop, two different bezels, connections, and such. All right, so I'm gonna clip this off, get a materials list going, and we'll get started. Let's get a materials list going. So you need some of the nibbit beads. And for those of you who are on the fence about nibbits, I suggest get a tube of them and see what you think because look at the beautiful bezels you can make with them. It's, it makes a nice substantial bezel. There are so many other designs using nibbit beads that are so pretty. So I kind of think of them like Charlotte's or five millimeter pearl, not something you use every day, but boy, when you need it, and you make something, it can be so beautiful. Okay, so lecture over about the nibbits. You need some 12 millimeter rivoles. I'm using these for my collection. Of course, as I said, you don't need to use the collection. You can just use beads from your stash. 11 O seed bead, 15 O seed bead. You need a three millimeter fire polish. Now these two are from the collection, as are the pearls. I use them in between. Here you see the, the um, sort of dark green color. You can use the gold one or even have three millimeter pearls in the collection. Um, I would pop those in if you are a pearl person. Try, try it, see what you think. Um, I've got a size 10 beading needle. You need a 12 also. Six or eight pound fire line black satin stop bead. And we're doing craw, so I use a bead reamer to hold my craw, and you'll see that. But I have a playlist, which I'll link down below, where, there, where I show you so many different ways of doing cubic right angle weave. All right, so I think that's it. So um, please don't forget to check the description box below for all the sizes, shapes, colors, amounts of beads you need, links to the collection, links to bead websites, whatever you may need, anything I need to add, anything you know I have to say. There are coupon codes down there sometimes, so please don't forget to click the down arrow, or the show more, the more, the three dots. You know the drill. All right, so I'm going to clear this off. We'll get started. Okay, let's get started. So thread your needle with about three feet of thread, put on a stop bead, and leave enough of a tail to sew in. Okay, so I've dropped down to my stop bead, a nibbit, two 11 O's, a nibbit, two 11 O's, a nibbit, two 11 O's. Always makes me laugh, nibbit. It sounds like ribbit. <laughs> two 11 O's, a nibbit, and two 11 O's. So I have four nibbits on, and I have um, four groups of two 11 O's in between. So I'm starting with a nibbit, ending with the two 11 O's. Just like that. Okay, next, I'm going to sew them into a circle. So I'm just going to sew up through the first bead after my stop bead, which is then a bit like that. And then I'm just going to sew all the way around. So just reinforce by going through all the beads and coming out the same bead that you started. Go back. I've reinforced my unit. I'm exiting that same bead I was exiting before. I'm just going to move my thread over through the next two 11 O's and the nib. And then I'm going to sew. So I'm coming out of the bottom hole of this nibbit. I'm just going to sew through the top hole. This is what it looks like. Okay, let's move on. So we are exiting the top hole of a nibbit. I'm going to pick up an 11 O, a nibbit, and an 11 O. I'm going to sew through the top hole of the next nib. 11 O, nib, 11 O. Sew through the top hole of the next nib. And you're just going to do that a couple more times and then we'll continue. Coming down to my last little group of 11 O nibbit, 11 O. I'm going to sew through the top hole of that last nibbit through the 11 O and the bottom hole of that of this one right here. So that would be the first one I put on. And then all you want to do at this point is just you're going to reinforce all around again. So just come around all the beads you just put on and then we will continue. Okay, I have done all my reinforcing, I'm exiting the bottom hole of one of the outside nibbits. I'm going to just sew through the top hole of that bead. And at this point, just sew in your back thread. So take off your stop bead, thread a needle, and just 
you know, sew around the beads a couple half hitch knots and that way you're done with that thread and it's out of the way. Okay, next round, so you're exiting the top of this nibbit here, any one of them, and so you're going to pick up two 11 O's, one of your three millimeter fire polish beads and two 11 O's. So you can use this, the green one, or you can use the, the gold one. Just exiting here, I'm just going to sew through the next guy, the top hole, the next one. I'm just going to do that all the way around, two 11 O's, fire polish, two 11 O's, the next one, like that. So finish that up, seeing it's starting to curve. So do that and come back and we'll continue. Okay, putting on my last group of two 11 O's fire polish, two 11 O's, sewing through the top hole of the next nibbit like so. And I'm just going to advance my thread just a little bit. I'm just going to go through these guys, the 11 O's and the fire polish, and then come out of the top hole of a the next nibbit. Notice how it's curving inward. Okay, next up, pick up four 11 O's. You're exiting the top hole of a nibbit. Skip all this stuff and <laughs> these beads and go through the next, the top hole of the next nibbit. And you want to make sure that those four beads sit in front of the, the fire polish and 11 O's over there. So we'll do that one more time for 11 O's. And you for 11 O's exiting here, just sew through the next one. Make sure those beads pop in the front like that. Do that a couple more times and come back and we'll continue. Coming down to my last group of four 11 O's, I'm exiting the top hole of the nib. I'm gonna sew through the final one right here, making sure those pop in front. And then I'm going to sew through the next four 11 O's. This is what I want your piece to look like so far. So you see, you have your little pocket going for your for your rivoli. Now let's take that beautiful green sphinx stone. I just love it. It's so beautiful. Look at that sparkle. I get mesmerized sometimes. Sorry about that. So just pop that. In. It's not going to stay yet. So that's what it looks like. Okay, pick up four 15 O's. We're going to skip this nibbit and we're going to sew through the next four 11 O's. It's going to surround the nibbit. See that? Four 15 O's. Skipping this guy, just sewing through the next four 11 O's. Such a fun bezel. Four 15 O's. Skipping this guy. Sew through the next four 11 O's. I'm just going to hold it with your thumb. And this is what I have. I'm going to pick up four more. I'm going to skip this guy and just sew through the last four 11 O's, making sure those pop right in front of the nibbit. And this is what we have. Isn't that cool how that holds that stone in so beautifully? So just reinforce everything. Just go around your entire um, piece and then come back and we'll continue. Okay, we're back and we're pretty much done with the bezel. So I still have my thread attached, but this is what it looks like. Here's the back, here's the side. Nice and sturdy, but, but yet I just love the... The front of it. So you'll be exiting the um, group of four 11 O's here. Just want you to sew through the next nibbit like that. And then you can actually go through the next two 11 O's, the fire polish and two 11 O's. And we can use this for our connection, or you can just, um, you know, sew your thread in. But I would come to the back and sew it in down here somewhere so that you have these beads open to make your connections. All right, so this is what you're gonna do. You're going to make three of them, just like that. I think I'm gonna make a few more just to see what it looks like adding more of the units on, but we'll see, you know, we'll see how it goes. Um, but anyway, so just get your units done and then come back and we'll start sewing them together. Okay, we're back. So now we're going to make the connecting unit. So we have this very simple connection right here that we're going to attach our, the uh, Rivoli components to. So let's get started. Okay, thread your needle with about, I don't know, 15 inches of thread. You don't need much. Put on a stop bead and leave enough of a tail to sew in. So I've picked up and dropped down to my stop bead an 11-0, a nibbit, 11-0 nibbit, 
11 o nibbit, 11 o nibbit, so four nibbit beads and four 11 o's in between, starting with an 11 o, ending with a nibbit. I'm just going to sew through them to make a unit. So it's this very simple unit like this, and then reinforce. I'm just going around again. Until you feel it's pretty secure, you want to come out of the bottom hole of your nibbit bead, and then you're just going to switch to the top hole. So sew through the top. You're going to pick up a three millimeter fire polish. I mean, you could do the pearls here too, the three millimeter pearls. If you want to make this, you know, put pearls instead of the um, fire polish, they're both three millimeter. So I'm just putting all fire polish around. So going through the last one, and then I'm just going to give this a pull. And when you pull it, it kind of curves inward. So that's, I like the curve inward, um, you know, of this unit. So I'm just going to keep going around, and then I'm going to make some half hitch knots so I keep that curve. And then the piece, see how it kind of bumps out a little bit like that? I like that, um, the way that looks. So keep, you know, reinforce this, few half hitch knots and then you can um, leave that thread if you want if you've got some left over and we can use it for connecting. Okay let's connect some units. So you'll need four of these, the small units, and three of the larger units. So I back pull out a little bit so see I've got four, one, two, three, four, three larger units. You can add more units on to make it longer. You can make the whole thing just units and not do the the, the craw chain. It's up to you. All right so I'm going to Pull that away, and here is my my um, Rivoli unit and my smaller unit. You want to make sure you're exiting one of the nibbit beads on the small unit, right there. So we're going to connect this nibbit bead to this group right here. Pick up two 11 O's. We're exiting the nibbit. I'm just going to sew through the two 11 O's and the fire polish, and then the the other two 11 O's on the other side. But you won't be able to get them. All at once, so I'm just going to do them separately. There we go, and I'll just show you the thread path in a second. So this is what it looks like so far. We've got our two 11 O's going through the two 11 O's fire polish to 11 O's. Let me just pull it over here for a second. We've got two 11 O's. We're going to go through the other side of the nibbit bead we started with. Pull that in. And this is what your thread path looks like. Okay, and then when I pull, that's going to just do my connection just like that. So you want to go around and reinforce the whole thing again, and then tie a you know a half hitch knot, a couple of half hitch knots, and then you're going to do the exact same thing with another little unit. You're going to connect the nibbit bead to here, just like that, and then you'll do, you know, you'll have your next. Uh, Rivoli unit and you're going to do that exact same connection, right? You're going to connect this guy to these two side guys just like that and then you're just going to keep doing that until you have all your units on and then come back and we'll continue. Okay, so this is what I have and you want to make sure that you have your little the small unit connecting units as your end pieces because that's where we're going to add the chain on. So we're going to do a little, little um, cubic right angle weave. You could probably do a herringbone, a tubular herringbone chain here if that is easier for you, but I'm going to go ahead and do the craw chain, so uh, let's get started. Okay, the part of the video I know you've all been waiting for, the cubic right angle weave chain, and I know it's a struggle, I know, um, but we'll, we'll just do it slowly, we'll get through it. You can always, as I said, you can always use a herringbone chain if you like, or any chain that, you know, beaded chain that you like that would look nice with this. So let's get started on the chain. Okay, so you see I'm using my bead reamer. However, I have a whole playlist of cubic right angle weave techniques. So check out that playlist. I'll link it in the description box below this video. And maybe you'll find a technique that you know speaks to you and that's easy for you. So thread your needle with a comfortable amount of thread. You know, cubic right angle weave takes up a lot of thread. So, um, but I, if you're struggling, make it, you know, make it three feet. 
Okay, so I put on a stop bead, it left enough of a tail to sew in. I'm going to use 8 0 seed beads because I just think it will be easier for you to see what I'm doing. I'm going to pick up four of my seed beads. You're going to be using your 11 0s. I'm going to drop those down to my stop bead and I'm going to sew those into a circle by just going through all the beads again. I'm just going to go through just two to start. See, so this is what you have and then you want to just reinforce by going all the way around. You want to pass where your stop bead and your tail thread is. I'm just going around like so. So this is what we have. Okay, I've done my reinforcing. You want you to exit a side beads or top bottom one side the other side that you want to be coming out of the top of this bead on the side here. Now I'm going to grab my bead reamer just going to pop it right down there or anything that you know will fit in there okay and I'm just going to hold it like this I'm going to pick up three of my seed beads exiting here I'm just going to sew through the other side of the bead I'm exiting I've taken my my I've sewn my um, tail thread in just to take that tail thread out of the equation so it's easier to see okay so I just put that those three beads on and when I Kind of move in this direction to see what I have. I've got these three beads facing me with the holes facing me and then these two right here. So I'm exiting this one underneath. I am just going to take my needle and thread and just advance through that next bead. Just like that. That's what we have. Okay, I'm going to pick up two of our seed beads. Exiting the top here. Let me see if I can get a little closer. I'm going to sew through this one and then the one I'm exiting. So I'm going to do them both at the same time. One, two. I'll hold that there for a second. And now I've put a face, another face of the unit on. And all I'm going to do is rotate. See how I'm just rotating my hand around? So this is, now these two beads are facing me right here. And I'm just going to advance my needle right up through the next bead that's right above the one I was exiting. And when I do that, you see how I have another, I'm ready to put another unit on. Okay, we're going to pick up two. Exiting here, we'll do what we did before, so through this one and then the one I'm exiting. Just like that. And now I have another face of my unit on. This is what we have. We're going to rotate again, just rotating my hand around and sew directly through the next bead. So I'm exiting here. I'm going to sew through this one. Okay, so if you notice now, we're exiting this bead. We have this one, this one, and we have one at the top here that's already there. I'm just going to sew through that one. So just putting my needle and thread through that guy at the top. I'm going to pick up one bead. I'm going to sew through these two. So these two right here. One, two. Like that. And then I'm going to sew through that top bead again. Right there. Like that. Okay, so that's the entire unit. But we have to sew these four beads together right here. Got to put a thread through. So I'm exiting right here. I'm just going to sew through this one. You can just sort of face it this way. This one. This one. Through this one. And you want one more because you want a thread here. You always have to, have to sew these all together at the end. And now you have your entire unit on. I'm still on the bead reamer and if you notice don't don't um, worry if you're you get stressed out look at the indentation in my finger <laughs> it's still you know it's still you know uh, gets me when I do cubic right angle weaves so don't worry about it here you go you've got your unit on and then we could just add another unit okay we're back we're gonna add on a unit so here's our I'm still holding it on the bead reamer because it's just easy so we're exiting here I'm going to pick up three of my seed beads. I'm just going to sew through the other side of the bead I'm exiting. 
like that. And then I'm just going to rotate and sew through the next bead in line. Okay, so I'm just going to, when I hold that over, you see I've got my thread coming out at the top bead there. I'm going to pick up two. I'm going to sew through this guy and this guy. So one, two. Get another face on. I'm going to rotate and sew through the next bead in line, which is this one. It's getting easier now, right? Two, pick up two. Get this bead and this bead. Sew through this one and that one. Just like that. Now we're going to rotate and we're back here. We have our three beads. One, two, three. Exiting here. Going to sew up through this one. I'm going to sew across the top one. I'm going to try not to blur out on this one like I did earlier. Like that. Picking up one. So I want to connect these three. I'm going to sew through these two. And then through the top one like that. And then we want to do sew these beads together. So I'm going to, I'm exiting right here. Just going to sew, turn it this way and sew through all these beads on the, on the outer edge. So that's one two, three, four, and then I'm just going to rotate my piece a little bit. You've got to go through one more. So you're exiting on the side and you have a thread between each of the, all these beads. And I have two units on. So you're just going to keep doing that. You're just going to keep adding units on until you have enough units to make your chain. So my uh, chain right here using you know, the, this configuration right here from this point right to the end without the clasp or the loop is about six and a half inches, which just gives me an 18 inch necklace without the clasp clasp. So I'm going to say this clasp is, is at least an inch and a half. So I probably have a 19 to almost 20 inch necklace here. All right. So you're just going to, but what I would suggest you do is, you know, keep, you know, make it a certain length and don't um, don't sew your thread in at the end. Leave thread there or you maybe add thread on if you need more thread. Once we connect the unit to the chain, you can put it around your neck. So you're going to make two of them, right? So we'll, we'll um, make the units, we'll connect them, and then you can put it around your neck to see how it's laying, to see where you want it to lay on your neck and, and how comfortable it is. All right, so have fun, play with that. Don't forget to look at the uh, link in the description box below the video to the my craw playlist in case you need, you know, this, this way isn't working for you. All right, so get both sides done and then come back and we'll continue. I've got my chain done. And before, I'm gonna put that aside, before we attach the chain, we wanna do this little edge here. So we're gonna add on another nibbit and then we're gonna surround it with some 11 O's and then we're going to attach it to our craw chain. So thread your needle. Uh, with about, I don't need a couple of feet of thread because you need some, you'll need a little bit of thread here. Um, put on a stop and leave enough of a tail to sew in. Or if you have a lot of thread left over, I guess, you know, you can use that as your attachment thread. Okay, so I've sewn through the end nibbit bead right here. Here's my stop bead. I'm going to pick up two 11 O's, another nibbit, and I'm going to put it through, you know, the, the fat end there, or the wider end. And I'm gonna pick up two 11 O's. I'm gonna sew back through the original bead I was exiting from. And now you want them to be, you know, wider end to wider end. So you're gonna hold that. So it looks like and then just sew through, so you're exiting the nibbit, just sew through the two 11 O's right here. Like that. And the 
is what we have so far. Okay, so exiting these two 11 O's. Now I did sew my tail thread in because it just makes it so much easier to continue beading here. It, it secures it nicely. So maybe take a minute out to just sew your tail thread in. Maybe put a half inch knot in there. So exiting here, I'm just going to sew directly through the bottom of that and it bead again. You can pick up two 11 O's, go through the top. I'm going to pick up two 11 O's, going through the bottom again, like that, and then back up through these two. So we're just sort of surrounding those beads a little bit. So that's what we have so far. Okay, this is what we have so far. We're exiting those two side beads there. Now I'm going to pick up two 11 O's, and I want you to come through the chain now. So you notice I have this unit facing me with this one bead here. You want to sew through that one. So I have two 11 O's on. Oh, what did I miss? Did I drop one? Yes. I have two 11 O's on coming through there. Like that. My thread just got, looks like it's going to break right there. Hopefully it won't. Two 11 O's. We're going to sew down through all the beads on this side, so all the 11 O's. So two 11 O's on either side of that sticking out 11 O. See, so that's going to cover, you know, that's going to sort of surround the last nibbit. If that happens to you, you know, redo it. I'm. This is a small piece that I'm just using as a sample, so I'll be taking it off, but I don't know what happened there. Okay, sewing through this guy. And then back up through all the beads on this side. It's going to pull them together and I'm going to sew, go through that one connection bead that I did from the, see that, from the unit on the, the chain. Don't worry, we're going to connect on the back as well. So this is what I have so far. I've surrounded those that um, these beads here and I've come through that center bead right here that's on the chain. What you're going to do at this point is you're going to turn it to the side and you're going to sew through this bead on the chain like that on the back and then this bead on the chain. So you're doing you're sewing through that exact same middle bead on the chain but just on the other side. Let me just pop that into place. So this is what it looks like. You're on the back now. Okay, so here we are on the back and we're exiting. So if I hold it straight up like that, that middle bead of the, let me move this, of the chain right here, but only on the back. So you see, you don't want it to attach like that. You want this part attached as well. So I'm going to pick up two 11 O's and I'm going to sew down through the last four 11 O's. Let me get this out of the way. So one, two, three, four. So I'm going to start here. One, two, three, four. I'm going to go through my nibbit again. I'm going to sew up the first four like this. I'm going to pick up two 11 O's and I'm going to sew through. Just make sure you're holding it um, so it's straight. And here's that little center bead again. I'm going to sew through those two. That one. So that's putting two 11 O's. See on the other side like that. So it's kind of, right now it's loose, but once you um, reinforce it, it's just going to pull that together like that so that you have a good connection. So to do that, you just want to sew down through, through all the beads again. It's getting, uh, the, we're getting full of thread, so you might need a smaller beading needle here. So far I'm on my ten, my size 10 beading needle. I'm actually using wildfire for this connection. So you can tell that there's lots of space in there. And then you're just going to go back up through all of these, through this guy again, and then sew through here to, to um, secure it and tie a couple of half hitch knots. And then you have your chain attached. So you want to just kind of play with it a little bit so it goes into shape. This guy, because you've got you're surrounding it, you see, with these four beads here and four beads there, so that you have a nice connection. 
All right, so play with that. I know it's a little confusing, but play with it and um, just make sure you're keeping this nice and straight when you sew both ends on. So you see nice and straight there, nice and straight on the back. Reinforce it and do the other side and come back and we'll continue. Okay, just a little note. When you're reinforcing around, you know, because we're putting a lot of thread through these beads, if you're having trouble getting through all of them, like the first time you go around, you want to make sure you get through all the beads. But if, if when you reinforce, you can actually come around and go through the top hole and come around again like that. That way you're not going through all of these again. Um, so see if that's helpful to you. It I did it um, on this side. This is the other side. And that was helpful just going through the, the top two. But that's after you've gone around them all at least once. Okay, just thought I'd throw that in. Let's work on this little um, herringbone bezel that's going to be our closure here. So I'm just going to make a strip of herringbone and then I'm going to close it up using some 15 O's. Um, now I'm going to link down below some videos and... Um, maybe some websites where I saw different ways of doing a herringbone bezel and, you know, see if there's a, an easier way of doing it. But this one, it seemed pretty good. So let's get started. I'm going to thread about four feet of thread on my needle because it takes a lot of thread. I'm going to pick up and drop down to my, and put on a stop bead, leave, leave enough of a tail to sew in. So I'm going to pick up four seed beads, drop them down to my stop, stop beads. I'm using 11 O's right now. And then I'm going to sew up the first two from the stop bead. So we're just doing, you know, just a, a, a strip of herringbone. So it comes out like that. And then I'm just going to just, I'm going to just sew through these two. And then we're going to go back up these two just to hold the edge in place. I should probably do this with bigger beads, but there we go. So we're just starting, we have an, our herringbone base now. Okay, so now we're just gonna continue doing herringbone. So we're gonna pick up two, sew down through one. So exiting here, sew through this one. Pop those into place. And then sew up two. I'm gonna do that again. Okay, pick up two. Down one, up two, just like so. So you're going to continue making this herringbone strip and you're going to make it, you're going to just test it around your your rivoli to see how the fit is going and it could be anywhere from 26 to 28 herringbone stitches so you're just going to have to make sure that you you hold it around your stone and you know it should just like any bezel it should meet when you hold it around all right so get that done come back and we'll go okay. back and i have 27 herringbone stitches on my strip and that seemed to um, go around my rivoli nicely so the way i measured it is i just it's hard to do it on camera because this thing just flop, pops out, but I just put the edge in the middle right there between the two beads and wrapped it around and kind of held it. And then, you know, these two ends were nicely, um, nicely meeting. So I'm going to do at this point is I'm just going to connect the two ends. So exiting here, it's going to sew through just a couple here on the other side. And I'll leave my thread path open. Then I'm going to go back up. A couple here. Come on, yep, there you go. And then a couple here. This is what my thread path looks like. I'm just going to sew those together. And then all you want to do at this point is just go back and forth a couple of times. You don't want to do too much, just enough to tighten it up so that it doesn't move when you put the next round on. Okay, we're back, and here is my circle. I've put it on a 10 millimeter double pointed knitting needle <laughs> to hold it. You can put it on a pen, it doesn't matter. I'm exiting right here, the top of this bead here. It doesn't matter which one, just make sure you're exiting like I am. Here's my thread. Okay, I'm going to pick up a 15-0. I'm going to sew right around and back through that 
bead I'm exiting, like that, and up one. Let me pull it a little bit. There we go. I'm going to place that 15 0 right on top of the bead of that, that 11 0. You're going to do that all the way around. So you're going to pick up a 15 0, exiting here, sew through the other side of the bead you're exiting, and up one. Two, and I pop them into place and that's why I put it on a knitting needle or a pen or whatever you know will fit okay 15 0 exiting here so through the other side of the bead you're exiting and up one you can switch to a smaller needle here you know a size 12 beading needle but make sure you pop them down I just push them down like that and this is what you want to do all the way around just want to make sure that you are getting a bead on top of every one a 15 on top of every one of the living uh, the um, 11 0 so exiting here so I'm through the other side of the bead I'm exiting and up one pushing it down that's going to be you know part of the inside of your bezel okay so get that done all the way around I come back and we'll continue Okay, coming down to the end, so I'm putting on the last couple of beads here, so here, and don't forget this guy right here. So you're going to pick up your last 15-0, exiting here, just going to sew through the other side of the bead you're exiting, and advance one. That's going to put our last bead on like that. And then all you're going to do is just, so you're exiting here, I'm just going to the top of this bead, I'm just going to sew through the top of this 15 0 just to put my needle on the outside to get ready to sew those beads together. Okay, so I'm exiting this 15 0. All I'm going to do is put a thread through all the 15 0s. So I'm just, you know, I'm just continuing to sew around. I'm just going to pull these together like that. Make sure you go through each one and see how that pulls it in and don't miss one. Like that. Going all the way around. To where I started. And you see how that pulls it in like so? And then you just want to reinforce this. So go around again. And then you just want to, after you come around again, you're just going to sew through these beads till you're exiting a bead on this side and you're going to put a 15-0 around every bead on this side. And But don't sew it together. We're going to put the stone in and then we'll sew it together. So do this. Reinforce. Come across. So you come out of another bead here and then do the exact same thing on the other side. Okay, we're back and I've got all the 15 0s on this side now and I'm exiting a 15 0. I'm just going to put my stone in and you want to pop it in so it sits in that little cup there like that and then you're just going to do the same thing we did on this side that we did on the th same thing we did on the other side you want to do it on this side you're just going to pull all those beads together and that's going to form the front of your bezel. Like that. So just do that all the way around, get through each one of them, and then reinforce and come back and we'll finish up. Okay, now we're going to attach the, the um, bezel to the end of one of our of the chain. So just make sure your chain is not twisted. You want to be exiting one of these 11 O's, like on the front of the bezel. See, I'm exiting this one right here. That one. Okay, so I'm exiting this one. And I would suggest you probably add a thread here because um, this thread is awfully soft. I'm just doing this for video purposes, but I think you want it nice and strong. So add a little thread exiting right here, picking up two 11 O's, sewing through, 
Just making sure this is straight, sewing through that middle bead like that on the chain. And then I'm going to pick up two 11 O's and I'm going to sew through. I'm going to count three beads over. So here's where I'm exiting. Let me just see if I can get this a little more clear for you. Exiting here, counting one, two, three. I'm just going to sew through the third one and then through these three, through the three back again like that. So this is what I have so far, making sure I'm not twisted. Okay, this is what it looks like. I'm going to turn it to the back, just like that. I'm exiting this bead on the front right here. I'm going to sew over through these three. No beads on my needle at the moment. You might need a smaller needle, but I'll just maneuver it there. So I'm sewing through the three on the back. Okay, so now I'm exiting right here. I've sewn these through these three. I'm exiting here. I'm going to pick up two 11 O's. I'm going to sew through the center bead on the back of the chain. And then I'm going to go pick up two more 11 O's. And I'm going to sew through these three beads again. So we get the front and the back done. So here I'll just pull it through and then pull and you see how I've got a little connection on the back and a connection on the front. Then you just want to reinforce. You might need a smaller needle here, but reinforce. And then when you turn it over, this is what it looks like. All right, so get that done, come back. Oh, and before you come back, <laughs> you're gonna have to make one more herringbone strip for the, for the loop. So we have to do this. So make a strip, 25, uh, 25 herringbone stitches, um, so it fits around your bezel, and then we'll attach that guy, and then we'll be done. Okay, see you in a minute. Let's add this, um, the herringbone strip on. Now, I actually did 23 beads because I'm gonna add a couple on, and I think that's gonna be a better fit, but you'll have to kind of work with that. So here is my, my piece is flat, it's facing up. I want this to be, I'm gonna connect this to the side beads, not the top beads. Okay, so just make sure your piece is flat and then I'm exiting one the bead, you know, one of my herringbone beads. I'm going to pick up two 11 O's and I'm just going to flip my piece a little this way and I'm going to sew through that top bead of the side face of my herringbone there. So like that. So this is what it looks like. So I'm just going through the top bead. Then I'm going to pick up two 11 O's. And I'm going to sew through the other side of my herringbone strip up a couple beads like that. And so let's see, this is what the thread path looks like. So when I turn it to the front, This is, you know, I'm my, my loop is going to be connected to the side beads. So here I've exited. So here I've connected it. Here's, here are the beads, right? So I've come up the herringbone. I'm just going to come across and go down the beads that I just put on. I know this is a little tricky. And then through that original bead like that. Okay, so when I, again, when I hold it on the front, that's where my connection is on the side there. So I'm going to do the same thing on this side, but I'm just going to let you get to one, one side done and then we'll connect the other side. So here's my connection for the, for the first side. I'm just going to sew through this bead and then I'm going to sew through this one. Okay, and then when I hold it, Again, hold it straight. My bead is exiting this, the middle bead on the side. Just make sure that clears up a little bit. Let me straighten that out. Okay, so right there, so I'm gonna connect like this. 
So I'm going to do the same thing I did on the other side, picking up two 11 O's. <laughs> this is tricky. I'm going to go through these two, or actually just tricky for me to get it. You know, get it so you can see it clearly. So two, but you, as you're doing it, you'll see it. So two there. Just organize myself a little bit. There we go. Okay. So I have two, two beads. I've come through two on my herringbone. I'm going to come down two. I'm going to add two more 11 O's and back through that middle bead. And that's my connection, just like that. You want to reinforce the heck out of this so that it's, um, it's nice and snug. Might even, I don't know, you might even need to put less on, or maybe instead of putting two during your connection, put one. Add one. So anyway, I'm just going to leave it at that. So this is what the end looks like. So let me just pop this over here. Here's our necklace. That was so much fun. Talk about a lot of techniques and just doing a lot of, you know, different connections and different bezels. Um, I think that was so much fun. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. Um, stay tuned for more um, pieces using the collection. I mean, like I said, you don't have to have the collection. You know, this, they're pretty standard beads that you can find anywhere. All right, so I really hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.